In this chapter, we will look at the different methods of handling exceptions in an RPG program. There are three options. Default error handler, resulting indicator method, implicit exit to a subroutine. Let us begin by looking at the default error handler. Here we have the sequence of steps taken by the system when an exception occurs. First of all, the system will set up the file information or program status data structure. Next, it will check whether the program has used the indicator method to handle the exception. If not, the system will check whether an error handling subroutine has been specified. If no subroutine has been specified, the default error handler will send a system supplied message to the user with the option to cancel the program. These messages are not very user friendly and hence it is better that we code our programs to take control when an exception occurs. The user can be presented with a message that is more informative. The resulting indicator method allows the program to take control when an exception occurs by coding an indicator in columns 56 and 57. Whenever an exception occurs, the system will set on the indicator and execute the next sequential instruction in the program. Let us look at an example. Here we have a file information data structure with the error field that is associated with star status and will contain an error code whenever an error occurs. This program adds new records entered by the user into a customer file. Duplicate records are not allowed in the customer file. The program uses the write operation to add a record to the database file. An indicator is used in columns 56, 57 that will be set on when an exception occurs. If an exception occurs, control passes automatically to the next line of code. Here we check the error field to see if it is a duplicate record that is an error code of 1021. In the case of duplicate records, we execute a subroutine that will inform the user of the error so that he can re-enter the record. Let us look at another example that handles program exceptions. Here we have the program status data structure where we have defined the error field that will contain the value of star status whenever a program error occurs. When the program tries to load a data area into the program and an exception occurs, the indicator in columns 56, 57 will be set on. If the indicator has been set on, the program will check the error field for an error code 00414, which indicates that the program is not authorized to access the data area. If the error code is 00414, the program passes control to a subroutine ERRSUB. The last method we can use is the implicit exit to subroutine method. When an exception occurs and the system does not find an indicator specified in columns 56, 57, it checks to see if an implicit subroutine has been specified. In the case of file exceptions, it checks for the INFSR continuation option on the file specification of the file which has caused the exception and executes the subroutine specified there. In the case of program exceptions, the system will check whether a subroutine named star PSSR is present and will execute the subroutine if it is present. Let us look at an example that handles a file exception. On the file specification, a subroutine is named with the INFSR continuation option. 
We also have a continuation option that defines the file information data structure. In the program, when an exception occurs on the chain operation, since no indicator is specified in the columns 56, 57, control automatically passes to the subroutine specified on the file specification. With the ENDSR operation, we can specify a return point in factor 2, in which case the program will return to that point in the RPG logic cycle. If no return point is specified, control will pass to the default error handler. Let us see how program exceptions are handled. The subroutine that is to handle program exceptions has to be named star PSSR. When a program exception occurs and no indicators are specified, control will automatically pass to the star PSSR subroutine. As in the case of file exception, a return point can be specified in factor 2 of the ENDSR operation. Here is a list of the values that can be specified in factor 2 of the ENDSR operation. With this, we have come to the end of this chapter. Here, we looked at the different methods that can be used to handle exceptions from an RPG program. We saw the default error handler, the resulting indicator method, and the implicit exit to a subroutine method.